Hi, welcome to tdcat.com. Today I'm in Premiere and I'm looking at grading, a couple of ways uh, of grading log footage uh, within Premiere. Just before I start, I want to say that uh, today I'm shooting this tutorial in uh, 2560 by 1440, so WQHD, Quad HD essentially. And that's a little bit different from my normal tutorials. I wanted the extra screen space and I kind of tried it on a phone. I did a test and I tried it on a phone and I thought, well, yeah, that's usable. I can, I can watch that. You know, even if it doesn't quite match the resolution of my phone, it's a little bit smaller. I can still see what's going on. So um, hopefully this is all right for you and um, you can kind of uh, see the, you know, see a little bit more detail. It gives me a little bit more room to play with, basically. And I may in the future do my tutorials that uh, require a bit more space, so Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, those type of tutorials in this resolution. I tried 60 frames per second and I thought, you know what? The downer with YouTube is you don't get a choice you know, if you shoot at 60 frames a second, you can't then watch it in 30 if your system's not good enough. I thought, well, there's no point for a tutorial, is there? Who wants 60 frames a second for a tutorial? So there's no purpose at all. So I'm actually shooting in 30 frames. I'm doing the tutorial in 30 frames a second. So enough said. Welcome to tdcat.com. This is looking at grading log in Premiere. Right, so sorry for that waffle to start with. What we have here is some log footage. This is quite a similar tutorial to uh, one I've done recently, uh, but that was very specifically aimed at the uh, DVX one, uh, DVX two hundred camera. This is just a general grading of log in Premiere. Any type of log footage. This happens to be Vlog, which is Premi uh, Panasonic's version. You can have S Log, which is Sony's version. C Log, which is Canon's version. Um, what's what's the, what's the um, Phantom um, the uh, DJI one? Is it D Log? Something like that. Yeah, and uh, there are lots of different versions of it around. So here is here are a couple of clips. They're just really really boring clip clips of oh flowers. How interesting! Wow. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I kind of always whinge at people when they just shoot flowers, but they happen to be convenient and outside the front of my house. So if I'm after some footage to do with this sort of stuff that isn't sensitive or can be easily used, then it's good stuff. Right, let's get started. How many minutes in? I'll just do a link at the start. You can just cut straight to this bit. So the first thing I'm going the first method I'm going to use is just using RGB curves. And it's important to use curves here because you need to adjust the uh, luminance levels together with chrominance levels, which is what RGB curves does. It changes all of them together. And if you're in, if you're from a DaVinci Resolve background and you usually use your sort of gain and, and lift and gamma, then that, that's what that's doing. It's adjusting all three at once. And, uh, and that's important to do here, otherwise you end up with some really horrible results. So all we're going to do to grade this footage is use change our master curve. And we need to change our pedestal. So we need to change our black point. We need to change our white point because log, log in general, it's white point is about, is it at about 80 IRE? It's black point is about kind of 10, between 10 and 20, I think, uh, once it gets into this environment. And we need to adjust that. And then we need to adjust the gamma. And you can do adjust the gamma just by pulling the curve down. So it's a really, really simple way of doing it. And it achieves quite nice results as an initial grade. So let's adjust our black point on this shot. But firstly, we need to look at the shot and say, is there any black in this shot? Well, there isn't. So if we just dropped the waveform here, absolutely vital that you use your waveform for this. And if you're not familiar with the waveform, it is just a representation of left to right in the picture. So, and then the luminance levels in this case, this is a, um, the, the lu a luminance waveform, uh, uh, how bright it is from zero to, um, well, 255 in, in many cases. So we can see here that we've got our white, white-ish wall in the background, and that's this area here. And then we've got a bit more detail in the flowers and they're, they're brought, introduced here, but we've still got kind of the white wall in the background at the same point. So we've still got this line here. This isn't blown out, by the way. This is just a white wall. There's no detail. So that's why it's represented with a pretty much just sort of solid line, if you like. Okay, so let's bring our black point down and we we'll just simply drag our curve down a little bit. Oh, why is, that, why is this not working? Have we disabled it? 
Hey, what's going on? Uh, hello? Why? Oh, I've put, <laughs> I've got the wrong clip selected. Why, usually it's set to, um, <laughs> well, what a complete balls up. Um, usually it's set to highlight the clip that you're on, but I obviously I've got that, I've got that setting disabled. Never, <laughs> never mind, good start. Right, so let's apply the RGB curves to that clip by double clicking, and that applies it to the highlighted clip. And um, we'll reduce our we'll reduce our blacks down like this. You can see that in the waveform. If we go right to the bottom here, see nothing is that black in the clip. It just isn't. So we don't want to take it right to the zero point. We want to leave it somewhere maybe about there. And now we want to adjust our white point. So we'll just push this up. And as we increase, watch the wall in the background. You'll see that, that oh, at that point, see, it just sort of becomes just white and just starts to just disappear off into nothing. So we lose all detail there. So we take that down, maybe take it down a bit more and maybe put that about there. And we've already got an image that's looking a lot, lot better. So let's switch between that and that. And now we just need to change the gamma. Uh, and we can do that just by, if I, if I just click around about here and pull the curve down, that essentially is like changing your gamma. So you'll see in the waveform how it kind of, if you look at the waveform as I move that, it kind of shifts within itself. It's a strange way of putting it, but that's the best way, best way I can think. And, uh, and that is adjusting the gamma. So we'll just do a fairly small gamma change on this actually. It doesn't seem to need too much. Just to note, it was shot on a pretty dark evening and uh, it was really, really overcast and dull. So um, there's no, this isn't meant to look all lovely and pretty and sunny. Uh, I think the black's probably a little bit dark there. So I'm going to change that black and change those, that black point and maybe adjust the gamma a little bit more again. Right. Okay. So I'm going to, I'll go with that initially. Let's see what the difference is. There we are. Lovely. And and what I'm going to do now is just add a fast color corrector onto here. So we go down to my effects and do fast color corrector. Add that on because that gives us a really fast plugin. Not plugin, effect. It's like a fully accelerated effect, isn't it? Fast color corrector. You can see here it's all it's got all the sort of bells and whistles as far as it, you know, accelerated effect is concerned. And um, and it gives us the functions we need. So it gives us a nice color wheel, hues, and all that sort of stuff. So we can change our saturation because generally log footage is a little bit undersaturated out of the box. Yeah, that would be a bit too much, I think. You can look at your saturation on the vector scope here. So obviously the further out from the center, this information is this 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 wave in, um what would you call that? I, mean, I don't know. This this is <laughs> um, the uh, the more saturated the clip is, the more the more chrominance there is. But I wouldn't go wouldn't go that far because that's just silly. Uh, obviously, with black and white, there is no saturation, so it's in the middle. But so when you're grading with logs, scopes are absolutely vital to use. You really get a good understanding of your scopes and your waveforms because. They're, they're essential. They're essential. They become essential tools for this sort of stuff. Uh, so if I push this up, maybe to about there, a little bit better. And what I'm also going to do is warm it up slightly. So I said it was an overcast evening, and yes, it was, but I want to make it a little bit different. So I'm just going to pull this over to the oranges a little tiny bit, like maybe like that. Okay, so what do we have? Well, that's our, if I take off the color corrector, that's just the small difference that makes. And I take off there. So we've gone from that to that to that. And that's just using RGB curves and fast color corrector in Premiere. So another way we can do it, we'll leave the fast color corrector in place because that sort of applies to both uh, clips. But I'll take off RGB curves and we can also do this with, uh, hold on a second, let me just search for it. We can also do this with RGB color corrector because color corrector has um, familiar 
things in here. It has gamma, it has pedestal, and it has gain. So pedestal is, uh, you know, is your, uh, we're talking about your blacks, you know, the, the, your, your pedestal is kind of the, the, the lowest level the footage can possibly go to, um, which at the moment is too high because it's log footage. And to make it rec 709, we need that pedestal to be to be lower. The only problem with this is a bit of a sort of sensitive control. So you need to hold down control while you're um, adjusting this. You can hold down control on your keyboard, and that will make it um, a finer adjustment. So if we just kind of drop this down like that to about there. So we drop our pedestal down, set our black point essentially, and increase our gain. And here again, we've got that bit blows out. So... Probably take that to about there. And now we can just reduce the gamma all, all in these three controls. So we end up with something pretty similar to what we had before. And then if I just, what did I take? Oh, I'll, no, I want to put that in front. So then I can just take off fast color corrector. And there we go. And it's, it's quite simple. I think sometimes when you, when you are working with log footage for the first time, it can be a little bit intimidating. You think, oh, I'm not quite sure how to go about doing this. But it is really quite straightforward. What you do after that is like up to you. You know, you can add more and more effects to it and you can do some really, really crazy stuff and just grade it to how you need it to look to create the feel you want. But just getting your kind of conversion from log to Rec. 709, which is what all TVs are and all kind of monitors they're all Rec. 709 gamma curve, generally. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do. So, you know, how far you go with your whites and your blacks, remember you have to make a decision on that because you have to decide whether there is any white or black in your shot. If you've got white in your shot, a definite white point, it makes life a bit easier. But, um, you know, that's just a kind of gauge gauging thing uh, by looking at the shot and looking at your waveforms. So hopefully that's useful. That's grading. Um, and converting log footage into something more usable within Adobe Premiere CC. Thanks for watching, and if you like what we do, please subscribe to the channel. I will catch you soon.